Four years ago, as part of building the company that is now Casio, we brought in an incredible drug development candidate called GDC84 from Genentech. And that drug's now called Paxalisib. It's been in seven clinical trials. It's touched the lives of over 100 patients. It's attracted huge attention from clinicians and experts in the brain cancer space, and it's built considerable economic value. Now we want to go and do it all again. We've licensed in a drug called EVT801. Now this was originally discovered by Sanofi, one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies, and it's been developed over the last couple of years by a company called Evatech. Now, Evatech isn't a household name, but they partner with many of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies to help and advise on their drug development. They are quite simply the best in the business. Now, they've taken this drug forward through its early development. They've seen some fantastic data, and now they're looking to find a partner to take it forward into clinical trials. This drug hasn't yet been in a human patient, so uh, we're still learning how we can use it and the patients that will benefit from it. But the preclinical work is absolutely first class. This is one of the most exciting drug candidates I've seen in my career. And this is important for us because we set a really high bar for ourselves with Paxalisib. And we said all along that the only time we would bring in a new drug is if we saw something that excited us as much as Paxalisib. This drug meets that hurdle and it's the first one we've seen that does. So we're going to do things a little differently this time. When we signed our deal with Genentech for Paxalisib, it made sense for both companies that Casio really took over. And although we've had a lot of great informal help and support and advice from Genentech over the years, this has been very much a Casio effort. With Evatech, we're going to work a little differently. Evatech's specialty is working in partnership with other companies. They have an incredible team of scientists, fantastic laboratory infrastructure, and a huge wealth of experience in exactly the things we need to draw on. Casio has always been a company that works through partnerships. Our whole business model is to work with other companies to do the work we need to do. And it makes perfect sense in this case to work with Evatech. That's their business model. And they know this drug like nobody else could know it. So we're putting in place a, a very, very interesting collaboration between our two com companies where we'll work alongside on the development of Evatech. Now, to be clear, this is going to be a Casio drug. We're going to be taking the lead, but we're going to be drawing on the huge expertise and the fantastic resources in Evatech. And I think that's going to really accelerate the development of this drug. We're not going to waste a single moment. We, uh, we want to get this drug into a phase one clinical trial. And uh, for any drug in cancer, that's when the rubber hits the road, is when we start putting it into patients. So we're aiming to do that by the end of calendar 2021. Now, as with all these first in human studies, the initial focus is going to be on the safety and tolerability of the drug. But we've already had a lot of very interesting discussions with the Evotech team, how we can build in some very, very sophisticated measures to start seeing at an early stage how well this drug works. So we're expecting to learn a huge amount about the drug out of the phase one study, and that should really guide the future development very well. There's a couple of initial themes that we're, we're picking up in that study. We're going to initially focus on some particular tumor types liver cancer, kidney cancer, one or two others. Not necessarily because we see those as the final market for the drug, but because they're great ways to test a drug like this. They can really give us a, a fantastic amount of information. And at an early stage, we're also going to start using the drug in combination with so-called immuno-oncology drugs, which we think is a really exciting area of opportunity. So we've got a rich plan for how to take this drug forward. It's the beginning of the journey, but we know exactly where we're going. It's premature at this stage of a drug's development to talk very seriously about market opportunity. However, the mechanism that EVT801 targets is a mechanism called angiogenesis. It's a central approach in the treatment of cancer. And there are a number of drugs already on the market that work by targeting angiogenesis. 
Collectively, they're worth over $10 billion a year in sales. So potentially, this is a drug that has a very, very significant commercial opportunity. And as we move through the development program, we're going to be working to understand that opportunity and, of course, to exploit every opportunity we can find to bring it to more patients. For Paxalicib, nothing changes. We're in a pivotal study for registration, it's going well, and that drug is now on a path to commercialization. Within that portfolio of two drug candidates, we actually now have an extraordinary diversity. Paxalicib is a very targeted agent, it's focused on brain cancer. EVT801 has broad applicability to a whole range of tumor types. But nevertheless, there's a fantastic consistency in this. We're very much a company focused on improving the lives of cancer patients, on bringing world-class science forward in the most innovative and enterprising way. And that's really what Casia will be. More than any one drug, we're going to be a way of, of improving the lives of patients with cancer. The story has changed and evolved. Casia is a much deeper, more complex company than it was when we started. When we did this with Paxalicib, it was the first time, it was the first time for Casia, it was one of the first times that anybody had brought this kind of business model to drug development. But as I've said before, our business model is no longer an aspiration, it's a reality. And we've learned how to do this. We've, uh, we've learned how to take a drug into Casia, how to build value, and even now how to partner it out, as our recent transaction with Simsir has shown. So we've done this before, we know what we're doing, and we're going to be applying all those lessons to the development of EVT801. But we've always remained true to one vision, and that is to bring forward the best drug candidates to change the lives of patients with cancer. That will never change, and that's what underlies Paxalicib, and that's what will underlie everything we're going to do with EVT801.